Baptist. <laughs> Two months ago, the Anglican Church installed its new national leader at an elaborate ceremony in Sydney's St Andrew's Cathedral. Can we have two lines, please, bishops? Two lines so that we can have a guard of honour down this way. That's true. However, a few hours earlier, in an extraordinary display of dissent, one of the leading Anglican preachers in the diocese hosting the ceremony called for radical action. Today at 3pm in St Andrew's Cathedral in Sydney, there will be a service to mark the inauguration of Archbishop Carnley as primate. This is an enormous embarrassment to us all. I was asked several times during this week whether or not I will attend the service. I've replied that I will not and that I would discourage others from doing so. I think there is a bit of bullying. I think a bully is defined as a person who behaves in such a way that everybody else's behaviour has to circle around theirs and I think there is an element of that in it. And I certainly am not going to be bullied by fundamentalist Christians, uh, that's for sure. The installation went ahead, but those who gave it a miss included some of the most powerful people in the nation's most powerful diocese, two bishops among them. Just why they decided to boycott the honouring of a new primate is an indication of the passion stirred by the election of liberal theologian Dr Peter Carnley. A few days earlier, Carnley, a renowned scholar with a taste for challenging orthodoxy, had written an article on the meaning of the resurrection. In it, he suggested that some other religions had merit, which offered equally valid paths to God. I can say to the whole Anglican Church of Australia that we are a, a church where there are diversities of viewpoint. This diversity is an enrichment. And we must um, hold on to that through thick and thin. I didn't think that I could be present because I thought that my presence would indicate to people uh, support of Peter and what he was using his office to say. Uh, and therefore I didn't want to be present and I, I wanted to discourage others from being present. As private, you will preside over this church and its decision-making in General Synod and its standing committee. Carnley's election was always going to test Sydney. The most unusual, politicised and passionate diocese within mainstream Australian Christianity. Hostility towards the new man threatens to bust the church apart. On behalf of the clergy of this church, I welcome you as our prime <laughs> The history of Sydney Anglicanism goes back to the First Fleet. Then it represented the only church in Australia and was responsible for Christianity across the whole continent. As other dioceses were set up, Sydney's jurisdiction shrunk, but the branch retained its wealth. It is still a powerful and influential force inside the church. It actually has resources that none of the other dioceses in the Australian church have. That's part of its historic heritage. We have uh, half of the country's wealth, a third of the country's Anglicans. Um, and also, the Sydney Diocese is very strong um, in terms of the attendances and numbers and growth. Today, the Anglican Communion is deeply divided. Very traditional Anglicans are often called Anglo-Catholics. They owe much to the Church's ancient past. This section of the church uses Catholic trappings, robes, incense and a heavy focus on Holy Communion. Anglo-Catholics have a great regard for the authority of archbishops, bishops and priests. Some other Anglicans, typified by Carnley, tend to be social and theological liberals. 
These Anglicans have much in common with the liberal wings of the Catholic and Uniting Churches. Good, thank you. Thank you for coming. The Catholic Church too. This is ecumenical. Yeah, we are ecumenical. Very good. Crazy how you. With its informal air and modern beat, this young congregation looks as if it might belong to the liberal wing of the church, Peter Carnley's constituency. But looks are deceptive. What you see here is a third force, Sydney Evangelicals, the most religiously conservative Anglicans in the entire world. The kind of Anglicanism that people find elsewhere is very ritualistic and very liberal in theology and in some ways quite old-fashioned. And, uh, and many people will say when they go outside to other churches that they didn't feel that they had the Bible taught to them clearly and so forth. These Sydney Anglicans have much in common with American evangelists. Sydney priest Bruce Ballantyne Jones was converted at a Billy Graham crusade 40 years ago when he was in his teens. To welcome one another, so what I want you to do is take a few minutes off, stand up, walk, walk around and say hello to everybody. Make sure everybody's welcome. Let's do it. Thank you. Ballantyne Jones' easygoing style belies the fact that he heads one of the most hard-nosed factions within the Sydney diocese. He's a man with strong views on the literal truth of the Bible and on its teachings about women in the family. You are reading tonight. Good girl. Marriage is a partnership whereby the man takes the lead in serving the interests of his wife and family and the woman takes the role of supporting him in that role. Now, when people see marriage as a competition or more concerned with rights rather than duties, then of course tensions get set up and there are ongoing and developing problems in the relationship. And I think that if people are more concerned to serve and support and, and complement rather than compete, they're going to have a lot more happiness in their marriage. You sit and you watch the chimpanzee enclosure and it's great because all human life is there. You've got Alpha, the big, dominant, macho chimp who is in charge of all he surveys. The trump card for he Sydney Evangelicals is that their congregations are growing at a spirited rate, far outstripping Anglo-Catholic and socially liberal parishes around the rest of Australia. See, chimpanzees know what it's all about. Sex and power. What evangelicalism offers in an uncertain so world is certainty, God, particularly to the young. They long to see the world put right. They are so... People at that age are very responsive and they're very sort of group-oriented, so they do it together. And uh, so we think that uh, if we can win people to Christ in their teenage years, there's a great chance that they will have a very fulfilling life and a very useful life for God. Drink this in remembrance of Christ's blood was shed for you. But it's not just a battle over souls. The evangelicals fight church politics with a tough-mindedness that wouldn't be out of place in the New South Wales Labour Party. The Anglican Church is like any other large institution. It has power structures and it has therefore political methodologies. The bishops, for example, have enormous power and they use it politically. And if you don't have other people banding together to see that their point of view is heard as well, then of course the whole church just becomes the thing of the bishops. We get the, the probably the, the worst elements of the institutional church. You see the politicking, the factionalism, um, you can, you can see brutality, you can see people using procedures, emotions and laws to stifle discussion and stifle dissent. Over the years, conservative political power...